everyone. I'm very glad that uh, Liz introduced the topic of language reconstruction mm -hmm. because my presentation um, will concern uh, language reconstruction also, but from a different point of view, from Lexis. How can we reconstruct words? So I will give you the key notions. I will equip you with certain techniques and methods of language reconstruction, and I hope it will help you to um, discover your own etymologies in your own native languages. So when we are talking about reconstruction, uh, we mean two kinds of reconstruction. Internal, that's what Daisy was talking about. When we compare forms of one language in order to learn something about its history, so uh, when we study English irregular verbs, which is a nightmare for all current students, uh, we just try to memorize it. But a historical linguist will trace some tendencies and will learn about the verbal system of middle English, for example. But when we want to reconstruct a proto-language, an ancestor language, we need an external reconstruction. It means that we compare different languages um, which show one source, one ancestor. And basically, we are working with cognates. So what are cognates? Uh, these are words of different languages which have a common origin. I will explain it to you. Uh, this term derives from Latin cognatus, which means blood relative. And uh, literally, all the names for relatives in Indo European languages are cognates. They derive it from one source. For example, the word mother English mother, German mutter, Sanskrit mother, Latin mother, Russian mat, and many other examples. So, here are four main steps in reconstruction of a proto-language. First of all, you need to gather all the data to cover all the material. Um, then, you need to trace uh, phonetic correspondence, sounds, rules, regulations, regular um, alternations of sounds, for example. Then, you need to reconstruct proto forms it means that um, there is a huge variety in all the language, but you need to find one more likely sound which could have given birth to all this variety. And then you need to check if, uh, your theory, your reconstruction of feasibility, to find some proof. So I will demonstrate it on the, um, I'll give you an example of the etymological language dictionary of the Slavic languages, which I was talking about last time. So let's look at a typical entry. It's very concise. Basically, it takes um, four pages, <laughs> this entry. But I'll try to present it uh, to you because uh, I assume that nobody knows Russian here anyway. So we reconstruct a proto-Slavic word like this. And here are asterisks. It means that these were uh, forms are untested. We reconstruct them. So we reconstruct this word. Um, these endings concern only the gender. So it doesn't really uh, mean uh, when we try to reconstruct the root. So this word refers basically to a wall or a castle or fortification. And we've got these examples from all the Slavic languages. For example, Old Church Slavonic Grad, Czech Grad, Polish Krut, meaning castle, Russian Gorod, meaning town, or Agarod, with a different prefix garden. And here is a Polabian word. It is, Polabian is an extinct language from the Western Slavic group, with, which represents the, this word uh, like, uh, as it was in proto Slavic meaning castle. So when we gather it, we, need, uh, we see a huge variety, but still we can guess that the original um, form of it looks like that. Vowel first, consonant the next. Because 
there is another reconstruction of Proto Indo European language. And we've got evidence from Germanic group. For example, English garden, surprisingly, has the same root in German garden. But this T uh, implies only to some internal German variations. So it doesn't prevent us um, from reconstruction. So it means that something it has a wall, or um, uh, it is um, separate from other world. So what we've got here, uh, another evidence from Old Norse. Uh, it is an old Norwegian language. And uh, surprisingly, the medieval Russian was referred to as Gardariki. It means that the first part of, uh, of this word means towns. And the, the second part, Riki, refers to a kingdom, realm. I think that those of you who know German can suggest a cognate from the, for this word. Kingdom, rule, right. 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 It is a cognate. So it means that uh, or Vikings knew these towns, castles, in the central Russia um, because they tr uh, had trading relations with the Byzantine Empire and with Asia. So how can we prove our results, our finding, findings? We established community correspondences with, uh, within the variety of the group. Then we found even attested forms like this leather form, but we cannot be always so successful. Sometimes we can't find this attested form. But we can have proof from other languages anyway. So I hope this uh, short excursion will uh, give you uh, an opportunity to understand etymological dictionaries more. Thank you. Uh, I, I have a question about the connection with, between the garden and the good. Because, for instance, in Polish, the uh, garden is of good. And I think that it may be somehow connected maybe with the verb, grudge. They are different. You see, it, it was very concise. There are a lot of uh, dialects in Poland which have their lexes. And, and uh, all the languages have its, uh, their dialects. And semantic changes are very prominent, really, semantic change. So, but uh, there is some connection between town, town and a garden, semantic, from a semantic point of view, because it is, you know, it has a wall. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, the Italian for garden, which is Italian, also has the same origin. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, even though Italian is not really related to Slavic languages, no, it's Indo-European root. It's, okay, it's common so Indo-European. Italian uh, belongs to the Romance group yeah. of languages, which belongs to Indo-European group. So it has really the same root. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any, anything else? It was it was fortuitous that your presentation came after Daisy's because they they worked so mm -hmm. well together. Can we give Idalia some feedback? Really kind of interesting. I, I really like it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was a huge transfer. I mean, on Monday you were feeling sick, but it was a massive transformation from Monday. It was because great. Really, thank, really, thank you for the questions. Like this, those uh, uh, questions guided me. Like yes. what I can improve, oh, what oh, information oh. I can put. But how good were the slides? And you did a new slides on Monday. It, actually, it's my first. <laughs> I thought it was really great. Yeah. Simple, clear, lots of white space. I thought, well, no, I, I, I thought it was really excellent and it was scholarly. And what I particularly liked was the vocabulary was high level. You know, it was a really good academic presentation actually. So it was a, a real transformation for Monday. So in my opinion, well done. I'm very sorry that I have no time to uh, discuss all these excellent things. About it's okay. You, you were just short of seven minutes, so it was a little bit over. Yeah. But um, truly, I thought that was very good indeed. Yeah, well done. Okay, now, um, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>
We've still got eight presentations to do. So I don't have...